One of the saddest moments for rock and roll in 1989 came in late May with the death of guitarist John Cipollina. Cipollina made his name as the lead guitarist with Quicksilver Messenger Service. That band, along with Jefferson Airplane and the Grateful Dead, were the founding forces in San Francisco's 1960s music scene. Throughout his career, Cipollina played with so many bands that even he had lost count. One of the few guitar players to have an original sound. Cipollina fans could find John almost any night of the week, adding his distinctive heavy tremolo sound to the smoky ambience of a San Francisco nightclub. John Cipollina was still playing with as many as six bands before he was hospitalized. He went out the way he wanted to, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, this is the way, this the way, this is the way he wanted to go. But I work all the time, I gotta work all the time, otherwise I go crazy or get senile or something. You like to play a lot of it. Seems like yes. It's, so it gives you a chance to play around. I get in less trouble uh -huh. playing than anything else. But he'll best be remembered for his work with groups like Quicksilver Messenger Service. Terry and the Pirates, Thunder and Lightning, The Dinosaurs, and Zero. During the 70s, he also appeared often with The Grateful Dead during New Year's Eve jams, most notably the closing of Winterland. Quicksilver Messenger Service was formed in 1965 by John Cipollina, Gary Duncan, David Freiberg, and Dino Valenti. As frequent headliners at the Avalon and Fillmore ballrooms, Quicksilver was known for its improvisational acid rock. Uh, I trust my reflexes more than uh, my judgment. Cipollina performed on the first five albums Quicksilver made for Capitol Records between 1968 and 1971. John's interest in playing with others led him to do session work, which would ultimately cause John's departure from Quicksilver. He later played on the group's reunion album in 1975. Cipollina's guitar work appears on 35 albums, many of them released only in Europe, where he remained popular and toured regularly. Here comes the night. Terry and the Pirates bear the distinction of being John's longest running band, spanning over 17 years. Led by singer-songwriter guitarist Terry Dolan, the Pirates included former Quicksilver drummer Greg Elmore, British keyboardist Nicky Hopkins, and guitarist Greg Douglas. very, very good friend to me, and uh, whenever I call him, I always used to ask him for what advice I needed, because he always had a really good perspective on things, and he kept me toned down as much as possible, because I'm a, a little too upfront sometimes. Another of Cipollina's musical associations was with the jazz rock group Zero which included guitarist Steve Kimmock, Martin Fierro on sax, and drummer Greg Anton. He was always a gentleman. He was a beautiful guy. If you don't know how to party, please don't come to my party. If you don't know how to party... Throughout his career, one of John's principal musical friendships was with blues vocalist and guitarist Nick Gravenitis. Gravenitis, who played with Michael Bloomfield in The Electric Flag, produced the first album by Quicksilver. Over the next 21 years, 
Gravenitis and Cipollina performed in many bands together, including Thunder and Lightning. If it's true that a musician is known by the company he keeps, John Cipollina was in good company. After his death, many of John's musical peers turned out to pay tribute at the Fillmore Auditorium last June 26th. I'm here tonight to pay my respects and tribute to my friend John Cipollina, who's an amazing rock and roller and a fine human being. He had a really kind, gentle, gracious spirit, and it's real hard for me to get in with the fact that he's gone. In high school, John Cipollina made me change the part in my hair from the middle to the side. Well, he was one of the four great uh, psychedelic era guitarists that came out of San Francisco, along with Jerry Garcia, Jormer Kalkinen, and uh, Carlos Santana. And now one of the four is gone. So it's, it's like a piece of my heart is missing. You know. What we're trying to do is just get a bunch of John's friends and uh, favorite people and, and his favorite songs all together through the night and uh, it's kind of organized chaos. Thanks for being here. John's brother, Mario, bassist with Huey Lewis and the News, organized the tribute. But as a person and as a personality, I always looked at him as uh, someone worthy of being in a spot in a museum as a totally unique person. This is him. He was someone who never reminded me of anyone else. And uh, uh, I'm sure that's how he will be remembered, actually. The evening began with a set by the Dinosaurs, a group whose members hail from the biggest band of the psychedelic era. Barry Melton from Country Joe and the Fish, Peter Alvin of Big Brother, Spencer Dryden from the Jefferson Airplane, Merle Saunders of the Garcia Saunders Band, and Grateful Dead lyricist Robert Hunter. The second set began with Grateful Dead sound wizard Dan Healy on guitar and vocals, backed by Robert Hunter for a moving I Think It's Gonna Rain. John Cipollina originally introduced Healy to the Grateful Dead back in 1967. Mainly forsaken, but surely not judged. Jacks, kings, and aces, their faces in wine. Do, Lord, deliver our kind. Later, Quicksilver members Gary Duncan and David Freiberg came out to perform a bluesy version of the Willie Dixon classic, Backdoor Man as well as a powerful pride of man. On the stage, John's guitar, a classic Gibson SG, stood in front of his wall of amplifiers with a cigarette eerily burning in the neck. The tribute ended with Bob Weir joining the closing jam. <laughs> 